Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at GarageBand for the iPad, and now we're going to talk about keyboards. Now, keyboards are a bit more complicated than the drums, which we looked at in the previous episode. In this case, there's a couple different kinds. Again, you can play regular keyboards, so play them yourself, or you have the option to play smart keyboards, which will play for you. Now, to get to keyboards, you'll hit the instruments, and you'll swipe over until you get to keyboard. This will open up a regular style keyboard, which you can play yourself. The keys will appear at the bottom of the screen, and by default, it'll put you into grand piano mode. You have a couple different ways you can play the keyboard here. Now, while you can add a USB keyboard in and play using a regular keyboard, most people are going to actually play using the keys on the screen here. So you just press down on the keys with your fingers. As with other instruments on GarageBand, tapping them harder will give you slightly different sounds. You can control the range you see here by clicking on the arrows above the keyboard to the left. Using the adjustment here, you can actually go up much higher than regular pianos and much lower than regular pianos. So you can actually create a sound that isn't quite natural, but it does give you some extra options that can give you a more artistic effect. Now just beside that, we have a slider for sustain. Now sustain simulates the effect of the sustain pedal on a keyboard. When you press down on the pedal on a real keyboard, it opens up so that it actually rides out longer sounds. Changing the sustain slider on GarageBand has a similar effect, but is nowhere near as expressive as it would be on a regular keyboard. You can slide it back and forth while you're playing, but it can be a little bit awkward. Now the next button above the keyboard determines what's going to happen when you slide your fingers back and forth over the keyboard. When it's in glissando mode, you have the ability to play like Jerry Lee Lewis. So you slide your fingers down the keys and it'll give you a sliding effect down all the various keys. If you switch this over to scroll mode, it'll actually move the keyboard back and forth instead. So you can still tap the keys to play them, but as soon as you swipe your finger, it actually slides you to a different section of the keyboard. Now, if you're not that comfortable with playing the keyboard and you want to adjust the keys that you see on your screen so you only hit notes that are going to sound comfortable together, you can actually adjust that using the scale button here. So tapping on that will bring up a few options that you can play. Now, you can go into major mode, you can go into minor mode, you can go into pentatonic, which is more bluesy, and you have a few other options here. Tapping on one of these will change the keyboard layout so that you don't have the black keys anymore, and all you have are white keys, but those have been rejigged a little bit to different tones so that everything works together work slightly different depending on which version of this scale you choose. Now it's worth playing around with the different modes here to see what kind of effects you have. Even if you can play the full keyboard, it's worth checking out a few of these just to see what kind of effects you can create. When you want to go back to the regular full-size keyboard, you can hit scale again and check off instead of one of the scale modes and this will give you back the full keyboard. Now the next button is for arpeggiation which actually takes notes and plays them in sequence. By default when you turn arpeggiation on and press a key, it'll play that note plus the note above it. And it'll keep going back and forth between the two until you release the key. So in the arpeggiation menu, you have the ability to adjust the number of octaves it'll run through, and in this case up to four. Now in the arpeggiation menu, you also have the ability to change how fast it'll run through all of the notes. So by changing it to one of the higher numbers, it'll run through really fast. Going to one of the lower numbers, it'll go through much slower. And the last option in the arpeggiation menu determines how the notes play in order. So if you play them in a specific order, it can play it in that order, or it can just run up and down, or straight up and straight down, depending on what your preference is for this. This is important because you don't just have to use one key when you're arpeggiating, you can actually hit multiple keys at the same time and it'll run through all of those up through as many octaves as you select. Now when you press them in a certain order and you have it set to play back in the order that you press them in, then it'll go all around as opposed to playing them all up and then all down. Now once you have an arpeggiated sequence you like, you can actually slide the sustain slider over to the side and it'll lock that in. Then once it's locked into place, you can hit other keys on the keyboard and it'll transpose the arpeggiated sequence you have into the key that you've actually pressed. Now lastly, you can adjust the layout of your keyboard. If you find the keyboard too small or too big, you can actually hit the keyboard icon over to the right and adjust that from here. So you have three different sizes of keyboard and you also have the ability to play double decker. So instead of playing just one keyboard, you can actually play with two hands on two different rows. Now you're not just locked into playing the piano on the keyboard here, you can play different types of keyboards as well. So we'll go back to single decker keyboard mode and then you'll see at the top a little button that has the name of the keyboard you're playing. Tap on that and a few other keyboard options will come up. On this you'll have tabs for different types of keyboards. The default one will be more traditional types of keyboards that you'll see in acoustic instruments. But you also have the ability to play synthesized instruments as well on some of these other tabs. Now to change to a new keyboard, just tap on the keyboard you want to switch to and it'll open up. Now if you open up one of the synths, it'll give you a few more options such as pitch bend and modulation like you'll find on an actual keyboard synthesizer. It'll also give you options for adjusting the sound of the keyboard using knobs over on the right hand side. If you've tweaked the keyboard sound and you want to save that for later use, you can actually bring up the keyboards list again and click on save, and then they'll put it into the custom tab for later use. Some of these keyboards provide a bit of automation, like arpeggiation for example, but if you want to make it even more automated, you can actually switch over to smart keyboards. Tap the instruments button and swipe over until you get to smart keyboards. Again, it has the gear icon around the outside. 
When you open this up, you'll see a grouping of vertical towers with the names of keys at the top. Swiping your finger through this will allow you to play the notes in that key. You can swipe through to play all of the notes, or you can tap to hit one or more notes at a time. You can play from different towers if you really, really want. You also have the ability to select your keyboard's autoplay, so if you don't want to swipe in time with the notes that you want to play, you can actually set it to do that automatically for you. Switching it into one of the different numbers there will give you different patterns. When you do this, it'll break up the towers into two sections, one playing the lower notes and one playing the higher notes. You can play two different types at the same time, or you can play both at the same key. Then once you're recording, you can use this to automatically play in time with the other instruments in your project. Again, we'll show you how to do that in greater detail in a later part of this series. Now with the keyboard, you don't have as many options here as you do with a regular keyboard. You tap on the keyboard over to the left, and it'll open up a small selection of different keyboards you can play in here. That's a look at keyboards and smart keyboards for GarageBand on the iPad. You can see the other instruments that you can play on the iPad on other parts in this series. You can check out the show notes for this part and the other parts in the series at butterscotch.com.